Hello and welcome to another episode of Addicted to Business. Today it's my huge honour to uh, to introduce Mr. Jack from Parsons. Hello, Jack. How are you doing? I'm really good. I've got my cup of tea, so already <laughs> early morning. Can't complain. Good. Everyone says well, to me, everyone says to me, how do you move so quickly? And this is the secret right here. <laughs> tea bag. <laughs> and of course, no episode of Addicted to Business would be complete without my good friend, Mr. Stokely Howard. Morning, Stokely. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Jack, as well, for joining us. It's, a, it's an honour to have you on today. So just a quick heads up for those that don't know, Jack's an award-winning young entrepreneur, public speaker, subject expert on youth, and is known as the UK's chief youth officer. Jack is currently the CEO of the Youth Group, which is building the world's largest most connected marketplace and community for young people with one aim. And that aim is to help improve the odds for young people across the Commonwealth to achieve their full potential in work. Jack, that sounds like an okay intro to you. That is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive straight in, Jack. You're one of the UK's most respected young entrepreneurs. Everywhere I go, I seem to be seeing you and everyone's saying great things. But I'm really keen to understand before we dive into this, where did this journey all begin for you? Uh, is it something you've always wanted to do from school or before that? When did it all kind of take shape? So, school, school for me was, was a tough place. Uh, I grew up in a council estate. My mum was an alcoholic. She was only ever in free moods, drunk, drunk, violent or asleep. I'd become a young carer. So at the age of five, I was negotiating with the BT man on the phone to make sure they didn't cut off the internet because we couldn't afford it. I went three nights without dinner. And it was either dinner, every time I used to come home from uh, school on the walk home, I was wondering, am I going to get dinner tonight? Or am I going to get the frying pan over the, my back? So it gave me a bit of resilience. It gave me a bit of confidence to actually want to do something. And I left school with not any GCSEs or any, any results. So I went straight into an apprenticeship. And that was really tough for me because I was known as the black sheep the odd one out, the uneducated one, but I grafted and grafted and grafted. And with the upbringing that I had with my mum, it was tough. At least I knew who my mum was, at least I had a roof over my head. So I said to myself, I need to go and do something, go and do something meaningful to create something. And that's where it's all spun from. Have I always been an entrepreneur? I think so. One negotiating the, the telephone <laughs> bill. bill at five. Yeah. <laughs> five years old two taking out a paper round because I was bullied until year nine and this paper round funded my judo lessons and within six months I became a black belt and the judo and the bullying stopped I so bet. <laughs> negotiation and the, the sheer fear of hard work and then also I had a sweet business on the side so I would go to school and sell sweets um to to all the kids on when doing the paper round. <laughs> there was a bit of entrepreneurial flair. Did I really know what entrepreneur meant? No, because they don't really teach it in school. Did I want to be an entrepreneur? Not too sure, because re yet again, there was, no, there was no role models around me. Yeah. But I'm definitely an entrepreneur. <laughs> um so it really interesting story uh jack um sounds like you you've you know you've learned a lot from from your youth um for, for the people that are listening uh tell us a little bit more about the youth group and, and, and where where that first started so after working um in a corporate for four years in the recruitment space uh, education recruitment I, I was billing about a million quid a year for that organization and I said to myself, something's wrong between young people, uh, business and education. I'm going to go and do something about it. So I took my savings. When you're, when you're a salesperson or in a sales role and, and, you're, a, and you're billing a million quid for an organization at the age of 21, you take home about £100,000 commission. Uh, before tax. So I used my, my first bit of savings to create my first adventure. And this first business was focused on diversity and inclusion to get young people from council estates into jobs. We put over 100,000 young people into work. I built the business to 8 million in, in 18 months. We had a team of 70 and everything was going really well until we got the wrong investors involved. Uh, so I let multi-billionaires invest in my organization and it, it changes the landscape and it changes the, the purpose 
I'm trying to change the world for council kids and they want an OBE. So <laughs> it really came to the moment and, and the, what actually the business is about. So I stepped away from that and then I created, I went on to set up the youth group. This time didn't take any investment, said I'm gonna do it myself, learn the hard way, actually let's go and do something meaningful. That's why the youth is in the name because we can't forget why we're here. And the youth group helps young people get ready into and grow at work. We've got a community of 1.7 million young people. In the last two years, we've helped over 90,000 young people without any government funding. Uh, we we um, are launching in New Zealand and Australia this year, which is really cool. And we've put over 9,000 young people directly or indirectly into work in their first jobs. So we've, we've helped GDP, we've moved it on a little bit. I can't tell you how much because uh, everyone's at a different stage. But I really wear my heart on my sleeve and believe that everyone should not be left behind. I'm also a realist that yes, there is lazy young people that need to be booted off the couch and get into the work. <laughs> I'm, I'm not an idiot when it comes to, or, or naive when it comes to that. But you know what? Let's boot them off the couch nicely and let's give them some motivation. Mm. God, Jack, you make me feel like I've been sat on my backside for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> An incredible. incredible story. And what incredible. I'm really interested to know, you said there about motivation. Now, obviously, your childhood was hard. We've touched upon that. And therefore, you weren't able to grab great inspiration. But there must have been some people that you've met along your journey that you've taken inspiration from. Who was that? So, in the entrepreneur space, one of my role models, and they say you should never meet your role models, and it's bloody true. You should never meet them. <laughs> uh, one of my role models was Lord Sugar, because okay. obviously, thinking about the background, I'm Essex, he's Cockney, it made sense, no degree. And, I, and this, it was the first real access I had to the business world, and it, it's not really, a, it's not something you should be inspired by, but uh, the apprentice and, and and that's not how businesses run on that show but hey and um, give everyone due credit where it's where it deserved to get on the show and i've got a good friend who won it uh, but lord sugar was my role model and when i met him he was nothing but an arrogant pig <laughs> and, uh, he's on the next episode by the way jack <laughs> <Okay>, brilliant <laughs> tell him i said cheers <laughs> but, but no, Look, he's done really good, and some love him, some hate him, but when I met him, I only seeked out for some support for 10 minutes, and he just was really nasty and ruthless, and he actually slagged off my dead nap, and it just was disgusting. I, I, it, anyway, that's his persona. So I met him, and he actually boosted me to go and get my teeth out and rally. Actually, it was the best thing he could do. And so they say, don't meet your role models. My, my, my inspiration now is anyone who actually executes and gets shit done. If someone's going to say they're going to go and do something and I see them do it, I give them all the time in the world. Yeah. If we're going to create a podcast and you're actually rallying and doing it and up in the morning doing this podcast like you guys are now, I've got all respect for that. I don't like talkers. Talk is cheap. Mm. Talk don't go nowhere. And if Bezos was still talking about Amazon, it would not be worth 200 billion. So <laughs> action speaks louder than words. I like people that action stuff, how big or how small it is, I don't care. Just move yourself forward. And those are the people that inspire me. And those are the people that I get a buzz from. Uh, and then in all, in all walks of life, when you start your business, you, get, you come across some great people. I've got over 40% of the FTSE 100 in my phone book that I can call up now and call an idiot, and you learn from them. I've had 10, 10 of the FTSE 100 on the phone, grown men crying to me. And you, you realize that actually everyone's human. So also anyone in business that shows that they're real, they're human, and they're not macho men. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we all have our sensitive bit. We all have our sensitive moments. And yes, you can come and try and attack me. I'll judo you. I'll judo black belt <laughs> to the floor three times. But lead with kindness and lead with respect for all is my message. Even Alan Sugar isn't macho, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree.
agree. Um, he gets upset well, when his hair's not in place. <laughs> I feel I feel the feed between you two. No, he's okay. One day you'll be worth more than him, Jack, and uh, well, you, 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 you'll shove him off to the side. Well, I, I, I think... Uh, I think his age will do that anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Jack, th there seems to be a, a global uh, a problem and, and certainly a, a national wide problem with the population's percentage of young people. Um, why is that and how do, how do we change it? You mean perception of young people? Sorry, perception. I, com <laughs> I completely read that wrong. <laughs> the, the, the perception, as in, as, yeah, it's basically what I'm trying to say is, is that. There's, there's so many of us are judged, right? And so many of us are, are perceived in a different way. I can give you one example recently. I'm trying to help this lad out, a 21-year-old lad who, who wrote on LinkedIn that he'd been rejected um, from a job interview. Um, and one of the reasons they gave him was because he was too young. And for me, I just was like fuming straight away. So I just responded and said, <clears throat> this is absolute bullshit. It's not an excuse. I don't even know if it's legal to say that as, as an excuse. Um, but, but, but why is that? And, and how do we actually change the minds of, of the people that have that perception? So I, I get you. I get you totally. I threw it as well. When I hear this, I, I, it grits my teeth. Mm. Uh, it makes me upset. The reality is you can't, you, you can't on a, you can't on a global level, but you can on a, you can on a grassroots level and you have to change one mindset, one HR director, one, one employer. And, and, and that's where it starts. So let's not try and boil the ocean. Let, let's start small. And that's what we've been doing for the last five years. How do you do that? Well, it's really changed. When I first started in the youth scene five years ago, it was very much um, sponsor a dolphin methodology and, and thinking, <laughs> oh yeah, we'll give a young person opportunity, sponsor a dolphin. And, <laughs> I used, I used to come out of these meetings and think, what do you mean sponsor a dolphin kind of thing? And so, but what I've seen over the last 18 months is a big shift. Invested in young people is no longer a good deed. It's the future deed. Why? Companies now know that they need to invest. Companies now know that it's no longer sponsoring the dolphin. Companies now know that the workplace is changing. 66% of the workforce is going to be the ages of 18 to 30 in the next five to six months. So they know they need to adapt and they know they need to change. However, there is individuals still in the mindset. Now you can't, you can't, you can't change how, what someone says, but you can how you respond to it. So I'm flipping it and saying, everyone who's got a rejection, every young person who's told they're too young or too experienced or actually too thick, that's what I was told. I was too thick. I've never run a business. I'm too stupid. Anyone who ever tells you those negativities or those negative comments, I'm saying to young people, respond, don't react. And respond by moving forward. It's just leading you to a better path. And while you're leading to a better path there's organizations like the youth group definitely myself and and a lot of us we're not the only good one out there doing some great things to really move that dial and change the narrative when it comes to employers being idiots <laughs> by the way there is amen to that <laughs> there's some really good employers uh, but there's also some idiots I look at young people as an asset to any business. Like what they bring is, is, is on the equal level to experience in my eyes. Totally. And it's all about having diversity of thought around the table. Yeah, of course. When yeah. I sit around every table, I look around the table when I'm going into a big corporate meeting or I'm, I'm doing a partnership, TikTok, whoever it is. And I go, oh, and they look at me. I go, oh. <laughs> One, where's my cup of tea? Because <laughs> I love my cup of tea you're meeting. And two, where are the others? And they go, what do you mean where are the others? I went, well, where are the young people? We're here talking about young people. Yes, I'm a young person myself, but where are the others? Where are the, where are the stakeholders? And, and they forget, actually, you need to bring young people into the design team because it's going to make your organisation grow. Mm -hmm. And they forget that. That they're deciding the future on how the job description should be, and there's a 60 year old writing it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So, and I'm not saying that 60 year old shouldn't write it, but what they should do is have multiple generational job description writing. 
and that job description should not go out online unless a 60 year old's looked at it and an 18 year old's looked at it and they both can come to the middle and agree that this is a youthful job description. Yeah. And I'm not saying cancel one out over the other with the council culture, but what I'm saying is both come together. I, I, I use this analogy. So let's take it, let's take a, a, a Stormzy song. song. A, song, a Stormzy song, a young person will li listen to that via Spotify. The 60 year old will listen through it via a Walkman, but they're both listening to the same song. Now, both will have a different outcome of that song. Uh, it might unease the 60 year old a little bit, but they're both listening to the same song. And, and we just have to find the mediums that work for both. The Walkman works for the 60 year old, the Spotify, the Apple phone, wireless headphones work for the young person. But that's what I'm saying is, if you can bring the two generations together in the middle and what, what organizations, which is what we say to organizations, it works. So there's not he said, she said, or this one against this one. It's just bringing people together. And we don't see enough of it. Jack, I'm keen to ask you about public speaking. I've seen you speaking out in New Zealand, speaking on the news, doing all sorts of great stuff. Public speaking is an art in itself. What three tips would you give to anyone looking to start or improve their public speaking performances? Oh, don't get me started about public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I get up on TV and I, I go, what the bloody hell am I doing on here? <laughs> no, but that's the first bit, actually. That's a really good point, is that it may not it doesn't come across that you're full of nerves but actually you maybe still feel uh sometimes insecure or sometimes nervous when you're going on these big shows you don't, look you do, you don't know what's happening five minutes before literally i got on bbc news the other day and i had my toilet roll pack sitting up on my kitchen side and it was one minute before bloody <laughs> gonna go live. i literally boot kicked that right over the uh, island um, and got back on on there and it went live and then we lost the presenter and uh, I was like, okay, am I just going to just do the show? So I just started doing it myself. I started just um, basically presenting BBC without any younger. <laughs> 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 so uh, you just got to get on with it. So one, understand even the most confident people were once not confident or actually are still a bit nervous. Remember there's loads of um, research. Also number two, research. Don't just get up on something and not know what's going on. And understand the bolts of it. Understand what the podcast is about. Understand what is going on, what this the theme, and be the subject expert. So research is really important. Don't overcommit your research and, and, and really have some sound bites. Uh, that's what we, I do really well is, say for instance, I'm talking about something, I will really try and have sound bites to make sure that actually it resonates with the audience. So I'll say my piece, but then I'll put a sound bite on it where they might think I'm loony or whatever that is, but they, they'll get it and that's what they end up tweeting. And, and, then, and then thirdly is don't speak at the audience, speak with them. Mm breathe, pause. I, I, did, I had speech therapy until the age of eight. I didn't speak. I just pointed at things. So I had a lot of speech therapy uh, classes that I had to go to. I don't shut up. When I first got on stage, I didn't want to be up on stage. I, I didn't really want to be in the public eye with all this. I really didn't. I just wanted to be behind the scenes, making the difference with no one noticing. But you have to go up on stage to, to get a presence. You have to go up there to make the business move forward. And my first stage I ever got up, I actually tripped up the bloody stage and went <laughs> over. And it was really embarrassing. And it was a nervous laugh in the audience. I got up and I, my knee was really bruised. And I was like, bloody. All I want to do now is burst out crying. That's literally how I was feeling. I've got 200 people in the room. I've got up on the stage. I'm wearing a suit too big for me. And I've just flipped. <laughs> How do you save that? And in that moment, you've got two choices. You can burst that cry and run off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> or you can literally get on with it. Take the piss out of yourself. Own it. <laughs> laugh and own it. And I owned it. And that was one of the best ones I ever did. 
because you know what? I always think to myself, what else can go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Any other stage you go on now, what could go wrong? Like literally, what I fall again? That's okay. I'll just yeah. get back up and continue. <laughs> I guess I, I guess you come across as quite human, right? When you do something like that, you're not perfect. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, I was literally. But you just you have to just actually own it when you're up there. Mm-hmm. And yes, public speaking is not for everyone. But if you're definitely going to build a personal brand in some shape or form, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a public speaker, wherever you are, you are going to have to do some talk type of public speaking, whether that's presenting an idea in your in your business in the company you work for, whether that's presenting to to your wife or husband on what to have dinner. You're going to be doing some form of uh, public speaking. So own it. Don't worry, you're unique, and there's not there's no such thing as the perfect public speaker. Agreed, agreed. Um, Jack, it seems like you have a very busy life, and you're doing and you're doing many different things for the business owners that are listening to this today. Um, how do you how do you manage your your work life balance? Like outside of, of the youth group, what, what else are you up to to to, to, to balance your life? I, 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 I'm a big, I'm a big uh, sucker for saying no. I don't like to say no to people. Yeah. And I'm learning to say no. I'm, I've got to 50 no's a day at the moment. It's good. But it, okay. there's it's still a lot more that needs to go. I just have a really good CEO's office around me. I've got Oliver. I've got Dasha. I've got a few good people around me that just help me keep me sane and, and, and manage my schedule and manage what I do. A round of running the youth group, I sit on several boards that I don't publicly announce because they don't need to be announced. I'm just a silent, like I mentioned a minute ago, I don't, it doesn't all have to be public. I yeah. also am an ambassador at Buckingham Palace as well um, on the Queen's programs. And I'm also an international special advisor to a few governments. If you do some Googling, you'll be able to see. Um, So I wear about several hats. On the side of that, I am a street dancer. Yet again, no one knows about. I I am a semi semi pro street dancer. I I get trained by Little Mix backing singer, backing dancers as well. And I'm a big advocate of dogs. So I dog walk. Uh, And people don't know that stuff. Uh, And I've started swimming. I've put on too much weight. So I'm in the process. I've got a PT now. I'm losing it. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have a swimming pool. So I use my swimming pool. And I just really, when I get downtime, it's not downtime to actually just be myself, but it's down to time to reflect. There's a famous saying uh, where if you're too close to the elephant, all you can see is gray. So sometimes it's about stepping away from the elephant to see all perspectives. So when I'm dog walking, I'm still thinking about business, but it just gives me another perspective, just gives me another focus. And, and, and that is what I say to business leaders, ones that are really on a journey right now. I, I, you know, I, I don't believe in this hustle, 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 hustle until you drop dead mentality, mm. to be honest, because I think that burns you out. But then saying that, I work 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. <laughs> Every <Yeah>. day, <laughs> Sundays. But I don't go, I'm rallying, hustling, Work for me is I'll go and take a walk. That's still work. Because yeah. actually I'm still thinking I will overthink of an email or I'll, 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 I'll type an email out while I'm walking. So I, I, we can't build a culture where it's Gary Fee and it's all run, 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 100 miles per hour, rah, rah, rah. Because even Gary takes time for his family. Even yeah. he takes time out and you'll see him disappear and you won't see him and he doesn't put his family online and, and you don't see that side of stuff. So I just think, understand that it's not un- to 24-7 every day, all day. It's 23-7 all day, every day. And there's, <laughs> there's, there's, one, there's one hour break and, and that's okay. You don't have to be, you don't have to be great at everything. So, but, but don't try and be a Gary Fee or just don't try and compare yourself to others who have been doing it for 40 years. 
Mm, mm. That's an invaluable tip there about that comparison. Now, I'm interested to know, obviously, with this fast growth has come fame and has come a lot of press coverage and media attention. How have you dealt with that going along your journey? You said earlier you, you kind of potentially quite introverted and maybe didn't want to be front and center. But of course, to grow the personal brand, you've had to come out of your shell and had to be front and center. How have you dealt with that? So in PE at school, I used to chuck the ball before they tackled me. (laughs) (laughs) And that is the methodology I used. Chuck the ball before anyone can attack. And what I mean by that is I'm very authentic online. I, 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 yesterday I launched a new digital academy for young um, uh, surveyors um, who are uh, disadvantaged young people that want to get into surveying. And I cut the digital ribbon of this new academy. I didn't know what was really going on, but it was fun. And, and, <laughs> and on, that, on, that, um, on that virtual event, I said, look, we're not all perfect. There's some times where I cry. I sit there and just randomly cry like a crybaby. And you know what? I'm a proud crybaby sometimes. Yes, it will only be once every three months or so, but everyone cries, everyone gets upset, everyone gets overwhelmed. So go and write that, Daily Mail. Go and call me a crybaby, because if, if you do, it, it's, it's old news, because I already said it yesterday. And so it's that methodology of chucking the ball before you get tackled. <laughs> like I did in PE and then you embrace and and for me no one can attack me and no one can hurt me and no one can hurt the business because we keep it real we keep it authentic we back it up with evidence <clears throat> and we make it back it up with data and, and we just do it without hurting anyone or, or without being saying anything so uh, I would say to anyone who's a bit nervous or oh, what about if they do this and not everyone's gonna like you. Don't go around, don't be a Pierce Morgan and go around upsetting everyone or a lot of sugar. But, and look, those two are really clever, smart individuals. Good on them, like I respect them. But you, you don't have to go and uh, create, uh, say something just for the sake of it to upset people. <clears throat> but know your worth before you get out of bed every mm. morning. And I, I, I take five minutes before I get out of bed to say, what is my worth today? What, what is it that I actually stand for every day? Because otherwise you can get really, really lost in what you stand for. And if you stand for no- nothing, you stand for everything and people will just walk over uh, you and you, you won't ever have a voice. Uh, I was mesmerized by what you were saying there. <laughs> it completely uh, hits home, uh, Jack. Um, uh, you sound like you, you, this is the thing, I guess, with, with talking about public speaking, you, you've got it all, you sound like you've, you, you've, you've got it all covered, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, from talking to you now underneath that, there is a real person, you know, um, and that's, that's, that's the beauty about it. So for, for any young entrepreneur listening to this right now, uh, like myself and, and Nathan, um, what five things would you tell them to help them uh, realize their potential? Someone who's a self-doubter, you know, a lot of people are self-doubters and a lot of people want, you know, don't think they can do something when actually they've got so much potential. What would you say to that person? So number one, I get a number of young people every day come to me and say, Jack, I've got this idea. Can we have a call? And I'm like, okay, what's your idea? Oh, I can't discuss it at the moment. (laughs) <laughs> so firstly to all young entrepreneurs out there your idea is not unique trust me there is someone smarter there is someone who has already thought about your idea there is someone who has already thought about the youth group and what we're doing it's how you execute on it it's not the idea and um, yes unless it's a coronavirus drug that you're creating then it's not unique trust me <laughs> it is not unique you are not special And it's how you're going to deliver it, execute on it. So one, stop being too protective of an idea. It's only an idea. Yes, when it becomes to IP stage and you've got something to show and a product, yes, protect it. But just put your ego to one side and your unique idea 
and just share it as with many people as you can to get feedback and it will help you grow. So one, don't be protective of your idea. Number two, go from having all the answers to all the questions. I flipped this about a year ago and I went from knowing everything about youth, because I am a youth expert, I know quite a bit, but I don't know everything, to asking all the questions to all different people. So why do we have employment law here in the UK, but not in America? Why do we do this? And you then listen. So as soon as you change your narrative from going from having all the answers to all the questions, you'll see the gold dust happen. And I'm a big believer, especially when you're in a meeting, the 70, 30 rule, let them do 70% of the questions. So that's number two. Number three, find your duvet flip. And I talk about this all the time recently, is what's your duvet flip and what gets you out of bed? Once I've, once I've understood what my values are for the day, what's gonna make me not snooze and get out of bed? And your duvet flip on a weekday can be different to your duvet flip on a weekend, but find it. What's your passion? Now you might have a full-time job. You might have uh, bread and butter to actually earn some money, but you, you've got a side hustle. You want to start your business. That's okay. So your duvet flip is actually earning some money so you can live on a weekday. And on the weekend, that's when the duvet flip comes in play because you've got your side hustle that you're trying to build. You've got your e-commerce business because you want it to be bigger than Ben um, from Gymshark and you want a big, well, big business. That's great. Use that duvet flip to get out of bed in the morning. Number four, network, network, network. One of the most ultimate successes to my success, well, my, I've still got a long, long way to go, uh, is the network. I've become one of the most connected young entrepreneurs across Europe on purpose. And how do you build your network? Meet anyone one month, two days, 10 months, five years ahead of you and ask the questions. Go and have a coffee, learn, be a sponge. Yeah. And as soon as you get five to five to 10 um, people in your network, connect them. Add value to them. Mm. And then number five, I would say, remember there is good and bad advice. So when you're speaking to someone, Lord Sugar said, I should not do the youth group and I should go and work for the Prince's Trust. <laughs> Prince's Trust is a charity, we're not a charity for one. Prince Trust does some good work, but that doesn't make me an entrepreneur in whatever shape or form. So don't always realize that the advice from the person that you're listening to or taking is the right advice for you. Mm. It might be in the right advice for them, but it might not be the right advice for you. So be bold and follow your gut with that and say, you know what, thanks for your advice. It doesn't align with mine or it doesn't, it doesn't what I want to do. And that's okay. That is okay. Mm. And if we were to put a bonus in, because I feel like it's a, <laughs> a bonus. We love a bonus. Yeah, a little bonus. Is don't let anyone get in your way achieving what you want to achieve. I had, I had someone come into my inbox. I have people come in my inbox all day. I had a 40-year-old the other day call me. I won't even announce it because I don't think it's fair on this podcast, the language but basically who gives you the right to, to do what you do, you something, something, something. Never know, don't know this person, don't know who they are. Um, it, it's funny because as soon as they go to 38 year old, it's between 38 year olds and 44 year olds um, that attack me. Everyone else is fine, <laughs> just, it's just <laughs> not all of them. There are some really nice ones, uh, but they're, they're just like it's for that group, for instance, they just attack. And we, we live in we live in a culture here. Uh, Britain, British individuals are very, very. We, we live in a jealous country. It's a very jealous world. That's why the Daily Mail does so well. Um, so here in the UK, it's a very jealous culture, but it's also a culture that um, who don't, don't embrace failure. 
And America does it really well. They embrace failure. They actually give you a star. For an investor in Silicon Valley will only invest in you if you've had a failure. And so here we don't embrace failure. So look, own your failures. Don't get jealous or look at other people's grass and focus on your own. And if someone does focus on your grass and try to attack you, smile and use it as motivation. Mm. This is incredible. I'm absolutely I think I was about loving 10. it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fine, final thing from me would be I'm really keen to hear Jack. You've obviously got your your kind of path mapped out and it sounds really exciting. I'm really looking forward to following that journey. It's been a really inspirational session today, and I really can't thank you enough for joining us. What's the next year, few years got in hold for you, Jack? Where are you going to take the youth group and what else have you got on the horizon? So I will step down from the youth group in two years. Uh, because I think it needs someone who can manage governance and actually manage people. I'm more of the creator. Uh, we are launching, obviously, in, we've got New Zealand, we've got Australia, we've got Canada, India. We're doing six countries in the Commonwealth in five years. Uh, and we want to build the community to 30 million. It's currently at 1.7 million young people. You're going to see, people will start seeing a lot of me on the mental health global stage. So what Greta did with climate change, I'm going to start really getting out there to really empower and support people with mental health. It's something really close to me, something that's not going away, something that's only getting worse, not just in young people, but in every age group. And so I'm really going to be shining the light and looking at ways that corporates and everyone, including the NHS, can really support young people and all ages mental health more. So I'm going to be really out there challenging the what's going on with mental health and how can we really make it meaningful? Because every life matters, it does, and everyone's mental health matters as well. Love that. Thank you so much. Well, thank you enough for joining us today. For those that are listening and watching, I hope you found that useful. Jack, for those that want to find out a bit more about you or, or learn about your kind of follow your path, where should I suggest that they connect? Is it on LinkedIn? Is it through Twitter? Where's best for them to follow you? Don't follow my path. Follow your own path and go for it. But if you do want to wind me up or say, say something we'll nice, I'll support you. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. If you want any, if, if you want a question or you want to debate me or anything, LinkedIn is probably the best place. Come over to LinkedIn. It's uh, where a lot happens. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to happy to chat. Uh, I, I don't like everyone saying yes or being nice. So challenge me if you want. Don't challenge me. Don't follow me. Do what you want, but be happy. Just be happy with yourself and, and don't worry about anyone else's grass. If this is giving you inspiration, then that's a job done for me. And I'm happy if you're happy. And, and Nathan, don't think I've not um, noticed you matching in with your painting with your pink shirt and your pink paint. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm away with it. By the half oh, you said, yeah. you can't wear pink. Yeah, I, mean, the background. I know you was up two hours before thinking, oh, how can mate, I match this all me. <laughs> He was painting it last <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> that really good to catch up lovely to have you on the show thanks so much for your time and thank you to those that are listening we look forward to seeing you on the next episode thanks again thank you